Hey everyone, our Sean McBride here with you for another recording of Best in Events. Uh, we've got some folks joining us live here. We're looking forward to your questions. And we have my regular co-host Andrew Watson and guest Patty Stern coming to join us. Patty has a long background in the meetings world here. Uh, she has a um, company called Creative Marketing and Event Solutions. 24 years in this industry, so she's had a long background in it. She's seen a lot, and she's going to be bringing us some ideas about taking events virtual, so taking them from the in-person to virtual, the idea not being to replace live events with virtual, but rather to use that as a tool to kind of get us through this period here and to perhaps enhance our events for the long term. So, Patty, you just want to give us a quick intro, tell folks a little bit about you, say hi to the audience, and then uh, I know we have some questions we want to ask you about this a little bit a little bit more about me yeah. so um i've been in the industry since 96. i cut my teeth in dallas with the best of the best talent and then i moved to new york city and i'm in new jersey now and um i have been in conference planning all of these years and what we what we have going on right now with the um the COVID and this the sense of urgency um, of everybody wanting to to go virtual has really touched a chord with me because I was fortunate enough to be tossed into planning an entire virtual conference this past fall for three thousand people, and that's what we're um, what we're going to talk about. We've got some questions for you, and I do want to preface before Sean goes on that everything we talk about today is directed towards planners who have planned live conferences before and you're now either in a position where you need to convert the live conference to be presented virtually or you're at the start of planning a virtual conference but you've got a good past experience of the general process of planning from start to finish for a conference. Right. I think that's a, that's a great jumping off point. So for those that are in the audience that have familiarity with events and, you know, maybe they're being pressured to do one virtual or just the realities are they have to do one virtual now, you know, what are the differences? What, what types of things should a planner be thinking about and saying, I know how to do a live event. Mm -hmm. What should I be working through and thinking about differently to get an event to go well virtually? That's a great question. So, there's a lot of things, you know, because here I want to say one more thing about um, having to plan virtually now. It's almost not an option. Um, we think that live events will, recon, you know, reconvene starting first or second quarter 2021. So this whole virtual experience is almost a have to. Um, I've had a lot of planners who have approached me because they're not quite sure what to do and they're, and they're a little scared and which I understand because I remember when it was brought to me and I was like I've never done a virtual event let's hey let's do it because that's just how we are in the meetings industry so here's the things that I just made some notes here about things that are the same of what you're already you're already doing for your life your conference theme your goals and objectives of hosting your conference, um, your education topic development, your speaker development, um, the invitations and the, and the confirmations to your speakers, your sponsor packages that you put together, even though the benefits and the pricing may change, but the heart of your package is probably gonna stay similar. Your exhibitors, Huge. These are the revenue, the revenue areas. The pricing is probably going to change. The mechanics are definitely going to change. But that whole process of soliciting your exhibitors, the relationships, all of that stays the same. Um, the conference schedule, how many days, how many hours. If you already started planning your conference, that's what you want to use as your benchmark. And as you get a little more in on the virtual side, you're going to you're going to make changes to that schedule, but whatever process you've been using to do that for your live conference is not going to change as you go over to virtual. Um, and your on-site logistics. Um, 
the same way that you do your logistics for your live event with, um, you know, all your rooms and what's going to happen in which room and um, people uh, checking in and taking care of VIPs and sponsors and exhibitors and on and on, all the on-site logistics, you're going to go through the same process. You're just going to deliver it differently. So that's what's the same. Now, here's some things that are really different on the virtual side. The virtual, you, you have a conference website usually for your live conference. You're going to have the same thing for your virtual, but it's probably going to be tied into the software on the front end, which is the website for the conference. And then there's the back end, which is all of the technology. So we might look at that as, um, you know, we all, we have our planning team and, and when we're on site, we're in the show office and we're, we're the, we're the back end of the conference. We're the ones that are making it happen. Um, that's something that's different on the virtual side. Uh, scheduling your speakers is going to be a little more, not challenging, but it's, it's definitely more labor intensive because you've got different time zones. It's different than everyone being on site for your live program. Now you're virtual, you have multiple time zones. You have to put a lot more strategy and thought into communicating with each one of those speakers and where you're slotting them in during the virtual um, experience. And, uh, um, and then there's tutorials. You know, there's a lot of hand-holding with the speakers and um, to learn how they're going to uh, broadcast their session. Um, a lot of hand-holding for that, a lot of um, coordination for that. Exhibitors, Virtual exhibits require that every single one of those exhibits have to be set up virtually. So instead of your exhibitors arriving on site and putting their booth together, they're still putting a booth together and they're still bringing materials, price lists, brochures, um, but they have to go in and design their booth and you have to, they have to be taught how to do that. And um, uh, and then they've also got to man it the day of the conference. There needs to be staff there so they can chat. You know, they can still, they're going to conduct a lot of business and in some ways it's even better. Um, that's going to be different. Communication is going to be very uh, different. There's going to be much more frequency in communicating with you, with the um with the attendees leading up, because you gotta keep people engaged because again, they're not going through the process of going to the airport, getting on a plane or getting in the car and coming to an event. It's a, just a completely different experience. You have to keep them engaged leading up and, um, and keep them educated, make sure they understand the, um, the user experience. Um, that is different. Day of communications are different. You'll be communicating all day the same way you do announcements at a live meeting. You're doing a tremendous amount of communicating during the day or days of your virtual. Um, that's it for that. I mean, there's more, but that's a good good foundation. We, we got some audience feedback here. Of course, we'd, we'd love the live audience. And Wendy's asking, rehearsing your speakers. Is mm -hmm. it different for virtual particularly Mm -hmm. in this window we're in right now where many speakers are maybe doing their first time virtual or they don't do virtual mm -hmm. often. Yeah. Any and that, yeah. Yeah. That feeds right in. I use the word tutorial. Speaker coaching is same terminology. So thank you for that, Wendy. Um, so what we did with our virtual conference is we set up a series of, two, we call them tutorials. Um, so that, and, and for the conference I did, we had 60 speakers uh, on in one day and uh, the schedule had already been put together. So every speaker knew what time they were speaking. So we strategically waited till all of that was confirmed. And then we sent out a um, communication to all the speakers to choose a date and a time for which session they wanted to be in. So they could be in something similar to what we're doing right now. And it was the software uh, the virtual software provider that did the tutorial and worked with our speakers in coaching them and giving them the, the guidelines on where to sit, what to wear, how to speak, um, lighting, and, and, and they really, really held their hand. It was, uh, 
just one more reason why you, your software provider is pretty important. Yeah. So, okay. So you got the software provider tutorial and then, you know, also I think there might be a deeper issue of having a speaker rework their speech, rework the way it works in light of. Yeah. And we did the same exact thing with all the exhibitors. Right. So it may not, it may not be your same speech that you would give on the stage. It's going to be a different version based on being virtual. Right. All of this ties into software. We're starting to get some questions about software, Patty. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, as far as, you know, picking a virtual software provider, mm -hmm. the first decision you have to make, where do you start the process of saying, okay, I need somewhere to actually, you know, have this yeah. line, right? Well, how do you go through that process? It's really important. And there's two schools of thought here, okay? There are some people that think, that, that uh, come from the school of you choose your, your um, virtual software provider last. And that's not me. If it's you, great. I'm going to address this from a perspective of, uh, I think choosing your virtual software provider is the most important thing you have to do. And um, because if you have, if you've already got a conference in motion, you already know well, we've got keynotes, we have um, breakouts, we have uh, we had a live event, we had Bono coming to sing, and um, uh, we've got clinical trials, we have an exhibit hall. You already know all the elements of your conference, and you're trying, hopefully, to duplicate, you know, convert it and duplicate it into a virtual experience. So you already have information you can go to a software provider to say, this is what we need. So that, that software provider can say, we can do that. Or they say, well, we can do this, 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 but we're not really, we, I'm not sure we can do that. And then of course you go through a series of demos and, um, uh, and look at them to start learning who you want to work with. And the providers are very important before you start planning the virtual. You know, even if you start it, even if you, you know, if you think you're going to just take what you've already started live and, and finish it out, say, okay, let's go find our provider. The, the example I always like to use is flying elephants. Okay. Let's say that Bono is your singer. Easy enough. We're going to have Bono scream from his mansion. And, um, but Bono says, I want flying elephants behind me. And you say, no problem. No problem. But then you do all your planning and then you wait to find your provider and you go looking for a provider that can help you with flying elephants on the stage virtually and um, nobody can do it. Well, what are you going to do? Go back to Bono and say, I'm sorry. I, it just seems backwards to me. That's just, Deidre, do you have any opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, to, you, when you start doing your conference, that's when you should start looking at your virtual suppliers. And, and definitely, like, what is the must-haves that you want to have as part of your components of that virtual conference? And you're right. You know, if you want to fly in an elephant, okay, how are we going to do that virtual and, and marry it with Bono's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, event or Bono's mm -hmm. component? You know, do, does Bono need to be on a green screen so you can put in the virtual component? Like, that's mm -hmm. there's so many right. variables that go with building a virtual conference. Yeah, and the other thing is, you know, you're, and we're gonna talk about this in a little bit, when you start setting expectations with the higher ups in your, in, your, in your company, you better be able to deliver. And also, if you're doing, if you're getting your software provider on the front end, they may have exciting things you never thought of that take your conference to the next level virtually because you're like, wow! we can engage people and interact and do this, this, and that. And then it, it starts getting terribly exciting when you're planning together. Yeah. So, so there's, a, there's a dance here, right, Patty? So, you know, you need to figure out what you want your conference to look like. Then you need software early in the process and you need to tune your conference to your software, right? The, they all come together. Right. So, I have a question in regards to, to the software providers, because mm -hmm. as we know, the, the whole 
marketplace and world is being inundated by these companies that go, mm -hmm. hey, pick me, I can do virtual software. So Patty, what's your recommendation on utilizing or finding the best software provider based on their reputation or based on yeah. the conferences you, they've done in the past? I, I don't think, um, I don't think it really matters. You know, some companies are, are bigger than others. I think what's most important is that they have the capability of delivering what you've asked for um, and, and that they are able to show you the demo of everything that you have asked for so that you can gauge if you like the way it looks, if you like the way it operates. And then, of course, um, from past conferences, of course, I, I would say yes, definitely ask for a few recommendations to contact those companies or associations. And, um, and, and if that software company is not open to that, then they may not be the company you want to work with. I don't think that's any different than any vendors we work with. And, um, but the biggest thing is that they can deliver and that you're asking the question of them, is this in-house? Because I think we've had a lot of uh, production companies and AV companies who are reaching out and saying, we can, do, we can plan your virtual conference for you. Um, I'm not 100% about that. I think the AV and production is critical to the end product, but not for planning all the nuances and intricacies that we're, we're, we're talking about. Right, so, and Mary, Mary had a question. Uh, do you have any recommendations for a platform to use for virtual exhibitors? For what? For virtual exhibitors? Well, what you hope for, and there are companies out there that have the whole kit and caboodle. You really want to work with one right. provider who has the software capability in-house to do the, um, the, the registration, to build out the tech, you know, the site with all the sessions and the schedules and sponsors and the exhibit hall should be part of the software that they offer. The last thing you want is to be piecemealing out your conference. That, that's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, it's something we could have done before, but it's not something we can do now. Even when you did it before for live, think about it. Yeah. When you, when you work with all these different vendors live, usually um, a lot of times we're working with vendors that we've been working with for years and they know yes. each other and there's a lot of collaboration. And now you're trying to whittle down your collaboration between the software company you're working with and your AV and production company and your company or association. Right. And that's it. Yeah. 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 Um, so based on uh, doing a virtual conference, what do you think that that spo speaker comment or that speaker component would look like? Uh, and we did touch about uh, on it a little bit, but you know, yeah. the, there's a big learning curve I got it. Speakers. I got it for you. Okay. okay. So I think we can all agree speakers and content are the heart of our conferences. So um, preparing them to participate virtually just takes a little bit of extra time. So for a live conference planners, this is the process you usually go through. You send the confirmation letter. Then you send them an email requesting their headshot, their bio, their session name, session description, AV requirement. You get that in so you can start building the program. Um, and then the final letter they get is generally the confirmation of the day and the time and the REM assignment. And then we're on site, they arrive, we have it, no, I'm sorry, we, we elbow, <laughs> we elbow pump, and uh, we're real happy they're there. And so what's different virtually is spending more time making sure each speaker has participated in the tutorial. And you actually have to do that. You got to follow up and make sure there's no cracks. Every speaker, lots of handholding and um, make sure they've gone through those and, um, and that they understand the platforms they're going to be broadcasting from. Um, and then this is very important with the speakers. At a live conference, we either have staff or volunteers 
whose sole job is to hunt down speakers all day long, make sure they're in their meeting space early, PowerPoint is hooked up, PowerPoint works, um, uh, their mic, the audio is working, the lights are fine, everything's ready to go before the guests could walk in the room. <clears throat> got to do the same thing virtually you have to make sure that every speaker is boom if they're scheduled to broadcast at 2 30 all that is taken care of and so you know i know in a lot of organizations and uh, companies you have a person who's just eat lives and breathes speakers and um they're going to continue doing doing the same thing and i got to tell you you're going to find that you're speakers love the virtual experience because they don't have to travel and they're going to be very receptive to everything you ask them to do and i will tell you one thing we did at our virtual conference and i got the ceo engaged was um we texted every speaker 20 minutes before it was time for them to go on so they got a personal text from the CEO. Hey, Sean, it's almost time. And, um, and because of that one personal touch that we made, our day went perfectly. We didn't have any snappies, no shows. It was, it was great. Um, does that help? Yes. I think that's very helpful. It gives okay. you a good flavor of just changing your kind of speaker checklist as you're going forward. Uh, another thing is probably on your checklist is talking to the C-suite, right? So whoever's paying for this conference. Yeah, um, yeah, they're paying. You probably need to reset expectations. Uh, well. You have the conference. So, so what types of things you should be talking about with the executives? Uh, to um, make a good experience. Okay, th and this goes back to trying to figure out who your provider is going to be first. Because what I want to say from the technical aspect is don't try to pretend like you know it all and understand it all. And you're going to walk into the CEO's office and say, hey, I got it, man. We're ready to go. Pick the right provider. Let them be part of the conversation in, in, um, in, in speaking with your C-suite and demonstrating what you've asked them to. You know, you're writing on through the process and said, I know that our, our executives, these are the things that are important to them and these are the only things I want you to show. Um, it will make a big difference because again, you have, your executives already know, we have to do a virtual, but they're really not sure what that looks like. And um, from a budgeting standpoint, it's all over the board. I've, I've visited with an exhibit company that charges a million dollars and it's Steven Spielberg quality exhibits and it's amazing, but I don't know many planners that have a million dollars for an exhibit hall. So yep. it's across the board um, with, you know, in the tens of thousands all the way up for money. But I want you to remember, this is very important. Since you are, you already had a live conference in motion and you already did your budget, just go back to your budget to take a look at where you can reallocate the funds, the hotel, the air travel, the ground travel, the food and beverage. Um, you, you know, see if you can take that money and reallocate it because you need to know how much money you need to go in. Again, going back to your software provider, if your software provider says this will cost $200,000, $200, you're either going to look at your budget and say we're covered plus plus or you got to go into the into the executives and ask for more money it has to happen and the other thing that's going to help part of your decision making to please stay aware of is there is a um a need for great honesty with regard to what image and you want to keep this in mind when you're looking for your software provider what kind of an image do you think they're going to want to present virtually? Does it matter to them that we've got the coolest, hippest software technology, or is it more important that we just got to roll this sucker out and we want it to be good? We don't want to have any, any problems, but it doesn't have to be the coolest, most expensive offering. And, um, but it's very important to ask that question. Um, because virtual conferences are going to become, uh, 
Well, I think there'll be a level of a, um, they just want to look good. You know, they, they, they just want to look good. And I also want to say, like Sean said, when this first started, we are in no way advocating that we ever want to see virtual replace face-to-face. We can't wait for the day for face-to-face. However, once all of you get through your first virtual and you say, I did it. I did it. It was great. It was perfect. I loved it. I'm not tired. And um, then suddenly things are going to really open up for you because now you have all these different options about how you're doing your live conferences and they may not necessarily be national or international. They may be regional. Um, So, you know, from an after effect, be thinking about that as well as part of your strategy to maybe even be a little bit more long-term in your conversations with your executives than just this one conference that you're going to pull off. Patty, you, you, you raise a good point there. You know, energy management is going to be different, right? So it sounds like with a virtual conference, you have a lot of stuff that's front loaded, right? So you've got to get everybody organized. You have to do sessions. Um, mm-hmm. Day of the conference for the planner, you're not necessarily going to be running around, you know, dealing with some of the issues you might typically deal with as a conference a speaker, you know, broken AV, a problem with a conference room. You have different energy management. You also have a different budget, right? So this, the money flows differently. So. Mm-hmm. You just kind of give us a high level of, you know, the difference in the process for the planner, right? Like where, where the time and energy is going to be, then also how this money is going to flow for these conferences. Because I think those are both going to be different. Well, if a conference has already been put in motion, I'm, I, I'm actually going to speak, that would be an association question because yeah. for the most part, corporate meetings are paid for and hosted by a corporation and, and, um, uh, and they're either mandatory or, or invitation. So the money is flowing from the company, right? right. I agree on that? Yeah. And so on the association, I think there, there is a lot of concern right now and a lot of questions out there about, um, gosh, we were charging our exhibitor $1,000 for their bid and now going virtual. Can we keep that $1,000 or are we going to have to change our pricing? And, um, and I don't think that question can be answered until you have visited with a software provider to ask them the question, what are all the cool things that we can offer our exhibitors in your virtual software? Because you may find that there are more bells and whistles available to your exhibitors that's going to get them very excited and when the virtual conference is over, when your live conference is over, they pack up and the circus leaves town. But a virtual program lives as long as you want it to. And, um, mm-hmm. and, and, and that's a good point you brought, is that when the, you also need to plan strategically for right after your virtual is over because you can already have your survey done to send to everybody. Um, they're not traveling home. You really don't have the luxury of saying, okay, we'll send it to them in a week. Um, your software provider is going to be able to, uh, you're going to have all the reports right there in front of you while that conference is going on. Um, you're going to have access to reports to know how many people are in each breakout room, how many people are rambling through the um, exhibit hall. And this is also, you have to take this into consideration on the, um, on the reporting to your sponsors and your exhibitors, um, which is, you know, different, giving them the, the reports and the numbers of who attended, where were they. Um, I think for the most part, you're going to have great response from your sponsors and your exhibitors. And with your sponsors, you're going to be able to do, to do so much more and giving them exposure all over the um, the main area for the virtual conference and in the auditorium, it's, um, it's, it's crazy and everything can be linked. So, um, what? I was going to say one of the other things that you can have with a virtual is you can actually have, if you've, I mean, of course it's going to be recorded, 
and you've got residual yes. income coming in after because those who weren't able to attend mm -hmm. can attend at a different time. Yeah. And also one of my other questions uh, that, that we have from the audience was um, especially being bombarded with different companies um, in regards to their services. Do you know of a list or uh, of best providers or anything else like that? Or are we kind of like, you know, get the three quotes and, you know, you're not necessarily getting the best quote if you get the lowest quote either. Are you, are, are you asking me if I recommend that people yeah. get if they're, well, I, I, I definitely, I, I definitely recommend it. And you, and you just got to um, look for, because uh, I, I don't feel like I'm in a position, I don't think it would be right for me to tell you all. Recommend. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but just be sure you're researching virtual conference software provider in your search bar. It's, it's very important that you put that word conference in and um, if that's what you're, what, you're, um, what you're planning is a conference. I think good general business due diligence, right? Like, you know, yes. call up, call up yes. other people and say, have you used mm -hmm. XYZ software company? Did they do what they said they did? Yes. Google their name. Um, yes. Really just do your yeah. research. And I think, you know, Deirdre and I are building a best in events Facebook mm -hmm. group. I know there's lots of other groups of business planners out there. Go ask and say, who's used these people? Did they do what they said? Yeah. They network. Yeah. The network. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's the and, search again? Uh, I was asking what the search is for uh, Patty. What, what, what would somebody search? What would you recommend they search? Terms. Oh, the terms um, virtual conference software companies. Okay. And you know something else, and I, and I want you to consider this when you're visiting with your, your virtual conference software provider. If you're lucky enough, and they're out there, because I know they are, if you are lucky enough to be working with a software company that understands planning from a planner's perspective, there's a difference. So um, it does exist out there. Yep. Uh, Tamara's saying something. Yeah, several people are chiming in with specific groups that they yeah. with or know of. So that's what we're talking about, the power of the network. Yep. Yeah. You know, go out and talk to your fellow meeting planners, talk to other people in the industry, see what's worked and what's not worked for other people. Right. You just jump in and write somebody a big check and hang your conference and probably your job on one yeah. provider. It is, it is really serious, Sean, and we were talking about this because you now my biggest concern, I've seen so many posts that people are so confused and not really even understanding the difference between using, you know, you're not going to use Zoom to plan your conference. Yeah. So um, I've just seen a lot of information and that's what really precipitated Deidre and I having other conversations because we've seen so many post and so much confusion out there. And I think that you're actually planning to do another session in another week or so to bring, so we can pull in the, um, yep. the AV and the production piece so you can get the whole story okay. where you're going to hear from an AV or a production yes. company. We don't do this. This is what we do. But we work with these people. Right. You've yes. got, I mean, you've got to be working with people who are transparent because again, you're going to embarrass yourself if you think you know what it is you're getting and it's not what you're getting and time is of the essence right now. There's no room for messing up. Yeah. And the best, the best thing that I can recommend as a, you know, I've had my own business since 90 or since 2006 is if you don't know, it's so important to ask, reach out, um, you know, Patty and I are members of SPIN and the, the, uh, the SPIN group is a wealth of knowledge and there's other organizations such as uh, MPI and PCMA and, you know, people just want to be able to share right now and get the proper messages out there so that you look as good. But the whole thing is, is that what you want to do is make your CEO look even better in a virtual situation because it is such new technology. Sorry, I, sorry, I, Mary, Mary, I was just reading your, your 
message and my jaw dropped. Um, wow, good for Digital. They did a good job. Digital did a really nice job for me yeah. on the on the GMID on Wednesday. I thought they did a really nice job. Yeah, and I want I want to yeah. talk a little of the planning section too, because you guys both hit on it. You know, that's my world is business planning and planning execution. This is the type of thing where you need to start early. So if you are talking to the C-suite and they're ready to make the decision to go virtual, say, okay, we're going virtual. Now you need to lengthen your timelines, right? Because you do have yeah. to search for the right platform, either search for the right AV people. You're going to have a lot of extra time in here. Right. So the sooner you can start the wheels rolling and mm – -hmm. You know, one thing we know when we work with teams on um, procrastination is a lot of times people procrastinate because they don't know and you need to do the opposite. You need to fight your instincts and say, let's, yeah. let's start digging into the problems. Let's find yeah. where the problems are and we'll fix them rather yeah. than saying, hey, we'll, we'll do this later. You got to jump. <clears throat> it's a new process for a lot of people. Yeah. And, and just to kind of finish up, the conference that I ended up working on, the um, the people I was working with were so lost when I came on board and they had procrastinated and they were three months out from their oh conference date when I came in. And so of course I went and did my planning magic, got them all situated. And thankfully they had already gone through the process. They had their software provider and I was very happy with their provider. And I learned a lot through that experience. And, um, um, so I was able to, you know, come in with all my, my planner organization and because the hardest part had been done, the virtual software provider that when I came to the table and I knew what they wanted and I was able to reach out to their provider because I did not pick them to say, you know, ask the question, let's talk about speakers, let's talk about exhibitors, sponsors, clinical trials, um, and bam, 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 that enabled me to go back to the client to get them situated and organized so that we could just go forth and plan and execute. And we went and uh, we went, it was a first time conference and we went from zero to 3,000 in three months. Yep. And so I'm, I'm as last thing I'm gonna say is social media plays, if you're an association especially, uh, social media is huge with your virtual conference. But that's yeah. another story for another day, right? Oh yeah, we can we can go on <laughs> for social media and the Facebooks and the Twitters and the Instagram and yeah, you know, utilizing programs such as Hootsuite. We can we can just go on and on. And now there's Trello yeah. too, you know, for for you know Daddy, putting Daddy, what an amazing there. session. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing our expertise. You know, uh, Deirdre and I started this experiment with this show we're calling Best in Events a couple of weeks ago. We started working together. We're going to be making it bigger. So, you know, we invite everybody to subscribe to our Best in Events YouTube channel, mm -hmm. our Best in Events Facebook group. Uh, we'll be getting an email list together to let you know about upcoming events. But, Patty, you know, you answered some very specific questions we had. We've had a few questions today. And we're taking those yeah. notes uh, for upcoming sessions. I know we've talked to you, Patty, about coming back and joining us again in a couple of weeks to work through. Yeah. Yeah. If you'll if you'll have me, <laughs> of course we will because there's so many there's so many questions around yeah. virtual that we've just kind of touched mm -hmm. on top of that. Right. So. And and we have Tamara on this call, and uh, I know Tamara very well. And Tamara, you want to put your camera on before we go? Is she there? Not. She's got her, she unmuted, so I think she's headed our direction. Can you hear me? We can hear you. I can, yeah, I can hear you. So we might, we might want to invite Tamara to come back for the next conversation. So she is with an association. Tamara is an extremely bright planner, very forward thinking, very daredevil, um, but proper. And I saw what she was writing here about who she's working with, with her exhibitors, because Tamara is one of these planners who has a huge concern about revenue. And um, so yeah. I love her. Yeah. So yeah. Um, same, same, yeah. same thing goes for anybody out there in the viewing audience. Send me, uh, you particularly, Tamara, but anybody else that has something of value. Connect with us on LinkedIn. Send us a message. Uh, we are building this program for the audience, right? We're speaking primarily to meeting planners, people in the events industry about what's happening. So 
would love to chat with you. We'll see if we can uh, schedule some programming with you. That would be great if it adds value to the other people. It sounds like it would. Uh, that's what we're doing here. We're just collecting right. together to try to make something better. So uh, thank you again, Patty. For thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Always ask my attendees anytime I do a video, pat yourself on the back for doing the hard work. I mean, I know everybody here and everybody watching this recorded, you're investing in yourself in the future and thanks for doing the hard work. We're here to bring you information, so feel free to reach out to me and Deirdre. I invest at events on YouTube and Facebook and we'll be back again soon. Okay, bye, bye. thank Hi, you. Everyone. Thanks, Patty, thanks, Sean.